Alright, what's up everybody? James Owens here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we actually have a pretty good leg session. Let me pause this real quick. Um I know last my last video was a posterior uh day where I did back and hamstrings. Uh today is mostly uh quad focused like leg training. So a lot of presses. Um we got three compound movements just like I talked about in my last video about how to make your own workout plan. So we got three compound movements. We got uh, hack squats, we got belt squats, and then we're going to do some leg press. And then we'll end it with um, probably a quad extension, I think, and then calf raises. So I already kind of did my warm up. And typically for leg day, I like to at least just open my hips up. Not necessarily doing um, static stretching or anything, but definitely I'll uh, take the opportunity to open my hips up, get my knees warm, get my lower back warmed up, um, and then start off with a couple of uh, dynamic exercises. So just doing some lightweight hat squats, getting the movement down, getting the motion down so it's not like a shock to my body when I start adding my working sets in. So warm-up's already done. I just wanted to, you know, do the intro of the video first. Um, so we're about to get into our working sets. We got three sets at 170 pounds. Um, typically, the rep range for this is going to be 10 to 12. Um, and then just based on how we perform today, obviously, we adjust for the next couple coming weeks up. So Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please consider leaving likes, leaving comments, subscribing to my channel. Um, and obviously, just like my last video, I've been talking to you guys throughout this video. So I'll catch you all at the end. And I hope you guys enjoy this, this video. So let's get right into it. First set, 170, hat squat. Let's try to get 12. So first set, we were able to get uh, the 12 that we wanted. It's pretty good. Typically on leg days, I like to take a little bit longer um, rest period in between sets. Um, so this one will probably be closer to two and a half minutes rest. And uh, we'll work on set two. All right, set two going down. Still go 10 to 12. Obviously, as we progress into our workouts, our performance is going to go down. Not technique just productivity or our output so still want to keep that goal of 10 to 12 but just understand the more energy we exert now the less energy we'll be able to exert later on We got one more. Okay. 11 is not bad. Searching out for set two. You can see our last couple of reps, we really focused on uh, holding that eccentric or holding that pause at the bottom. So it felt pretty good. Typically, you know, I watch my videos um, a lot just to make sure my form's okay. Make sure I'm, I'm doing, you know, practicing what I'm preaching, right? It wouldn't make sense for me to tell you guys, like, the right way to do things or the most optimal way to do things. Or at least give you examples from my experience and I'm not practicing it myself. So, definitely I watch my videos. Um, 
fairly often, right? Sometimes I even send them to my coach. Um, and then my coach gives me his critiques. And, you know, we have a lot of uh, lessons learned and just ways to make the exercise better. So I highly recommend you recording yourself. I know it kind of feels like one of those douchebag things to do in the gym, setting up a tripod and things like that. But if not any, if not every exercise, definitely exercise that you feel like you struggle with or that don't really feel comfortable to you. Record them, watch them, you know, maybe compare them to, uh, you know, bodybuilders or trainers that you really like. I do a lot of, uh, you know, I like Squat University on Instagram. It's a really good page that shows you like technique and form. But um, most of the time I watch them myself or I send them to my coach and, you know, we talk about ways to make it better. So definitely record yourself so you can, uh, you know, kind of adjust and see things that you need to improve on. But set two done. We got 11. I'm going to go ahead and track it in my program that I taught you guys how to do. And uh, we can get ready for set three. Okay. Um, set three. Like I said, as we continue to perform and progress in the workout, um, we can anticipate our productivity being a little bit less set after set. So I got 12. I got 11. Theoretically, I'm hoping I can get 9 or 10. But we're really going to push for 11 again. But um, let's see. I got President Carter by Lil Wayne playing in my ear right now, so I might end up getting fucking 15. No, I'm playing. Um, but let's go. Set three going down. Come on, one more. All right. Oh, he got another one. All right. All right. You got one more. Yeah. Uh, oh. That's it. Oh, fuck. Now, honestly, I got to six, and uh, <laughs> I didn't see myself making it to ten. But you just worry about rep after rep. Don't worry about the overall set. You just take it a rep at a time. Make sure your form is good. Make sure your technique is fine. You just get after it. Get after it. Get after it. That's it. Set three done. We're done on the hot spot. So I'm gonna wipe the machine down. Re rack my weights. And then we're moving on to belt squats. Okay. Okay, so pause this real quick. So belt squats, probably my favorite um, exercise for overall leg development just because we're able to get a full range of motion within the squat. And it's also a safer alternative than, you know, barbell, even, even switch machine. But you know, I don't recommend you completely getting rid of you know, other squat variants, but if you're looking for a safer way and I believe a more optimal way to really target your, your overall legs, um, I think the belt squat is a really good way to do so. You don't have to worry about, you know, balancing the bar on your back or using too many of your stabilizing muscles. You can really just, you know, focus on the squat. And you'll see here in a little bit, you can really just concentrate on the squat, really concentrating on, on the, the depth and, and kind of hinging at your hips. So um, set one here, 10 to 12 rep range with that 12th rep being theoretically the hardest one. Um, we actually jumped up about 20 pounds this go around compared to last week. So we got 180, 90 on each side here. And we're trying to get 10 to 12 with that one RIR, that one, that one rep in reserve. So let's see what we can do here. My legs are feet pretty much shoulder width apart, maybe a little wider depending on you know, your depth complications, but, you know, you don't want to lean too far behind you or too far forward. Good hand position, good feet placement, and then just focus on squatting and standing up. Set one, 10 to 12, one RIR. 
180 pounds. Up one. Up two. So that burns there. Twelve. Let me say <laughs> twelve. Uh, pretty much where we wanted to be, especially going up, jumping up a couple uh pounds from last week. So not bad. Um, yeah. Let me get my shit together first. We want good quality reps. We're not necessarily worried about how many reps we can do, more of the quality of the reps that we do. You know, if your reps don't look the same through and through, every rep looks different, you definitely need to lower the weight and really focus on your form and technique. But set one down, we got 12. Let's get a good rest and work on set two. Let's go set two, same weight, same rep range. Pretty, pretty deep on the on the wrong rep range or range of motion. We just need to bring that in set three. And we got ten for that one. Set two done. Let's get a good rest. In. Go on to set three. Let's hope this is good enough. We got the light behind us, so it's gonna be a little dark. But I just like to get different angles for y'all and different angles kind of show us the gym a little bit so y'all can kind of see what the gym looks like but set three here goals are still the same get right into it get your girl. okay drop it to the float like that ass shake that's an ass quake that's an ass state Come up on that one. So eight. That shit definitely caught us off guard. It was feeling good at seven. So set three got eight, not bad. Hey, if I came out of nowhere, y'all almost saw me fucking fuck my snap my shit all up. 
All right, moving on to Lake Press. So we got a uh, Lake Press here at uh, 290. I think we went up 10, 20 pounds from last week. So we got 290 here, right range still, same, 10 to 12. Obviously, we're doing the same thing as we've been doing. Good pause at the bottom. Keep that tension on the quads here. Foot placement is, you know, it varies. Um, obviously, comfort is priority. And then you want to ensure that your whatever foot placement you have, you're able to get full range of motion or at least an adequate range of motion to optimize this exercise here. Um, with the goal being 10 to 12, that's a little bit higher rep range. I do want my feet kind of close together, maybe like with a little bit within shoulder width apart. But for me, obviously I had that prior injury where I, I broke my metatarsal, so like the outside of my left foot can't take a lot of uh, a lot of tension over an extended period of time. So I like to keep my feet a little bit closer together and not too much of a, like a hip, like opening my hips up a little bit. So as the weight comes down, you'll kind of see my heels raised off of the platform and I put a lot more pressure on my toes. One, what that does, it helps me keep the weight kind of towards the front or the top right of my foot where my big toe is versus the left side where the fifth metatarsal is at the pinky toe. And also with my feet, bit with, with the weight being pressed on my toes, that puts a little bit more tension on my quad. So it's like a two for one. There's a safety concern there. Um, but just with any other exercise, there's always safety concerns. So as long as you're executing it in the right way and you're able to target the muscle that you're looking to target, um, you know, I think, you know, that's the most optimal uh, thing you can do just depending on your goals and your current you know, physical limitations. So me and my feet are going to be a little bit high. I do kind of want more of a, a little bit more of a 90 degree angle from, you know, my quads to my, my knee or my uh, calves here. Anything lower is going to put a lot more tension on my toes or I need a lot more uh, ankle mobility. So moderately high on the platform. Like I said, feet within, uh, shoulder width apart. And as I come down or as the weight comes down into the eccentric, I'm going to have limited flexion or limited uh, opening up at the knees and the hips and more keeping my knees and my feet straight. I want that weight to come straight back against my shins directly to my quads. I'm going to come up on my toes just a little bit as I start to, to push into the concentric and then once I get to the top, my feet will flatten out for that full contraction. So I talk too much. Hopefully I'm recording this my camera if I press record or not and my camera screen isn't facing me. So set one, 10 to 12, 290 pounds one RIR, one rep in reserve. Yep. Oof. 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 Yep. Oh. Oh. So we got 13. Um, that felt really good. That felt really nice. Didn't feel a lot on my outside of my foot on my, you know, fifth metatarsal by the pinky toe. And uh, I can really feel it as I push off the weight kind of shift to the ball or the, the big toe area of my foot. And then I really feel that, that tension kind of just drive up my shins and really focus on the inside sweep of these quads right here. Obviously from this week, legs aren't like a big deal, but I like a balanced looking physique, uh, an aesthetic physique, and that's uh, kind of achieving that x ray look. So set one down, got 13. Let's try to get 12 for set two. Okay, set two here. Uh, yeah, my lower back feels fine, man. Legs feel pretty good right now. A little bit sore, but that's, that's a given. Um, yeah, feels pretty good right now, so we can go for set two. Right range still the same, 10 to 12 reps. Um, continue on with the same form, same technique. The goal, obviously, is to kind of pause and rest up in that, uh, that eccentric or that, that bottom. And then really uh, 
maintain that tension throughout the entire movement up until our constant. That's going to give us the most um, like hypertrophy. So various rep ranges, maintaining tension is, is, is really going to feed us the most um, hypertrophy for, for muscle building. Now, that's basically bodybuilding goals. If you're a powerlifter, obviously your, your, uh, your technique and everything is going to vary. But for bodybuilding purposes, hypertrophy is the key. Um, honestly, I can do more than this as far as a one or two rep max, but that's not the goal here. Um, the goal is hypertrophy, so we want good rep ranges, good range of motion, and, and maintain tension throughout the entire movement. So set two here, same weight. Oh, I feel like an old man getting into this. I, this is probably the, my favorite leg press machine, the sled variant. There are, there are other variations like angled leg press and stuff, but I think the sled for me is my favorite. One thing I like about the leg press, or like as I get deeper into my sets, my range of motion becomes a lot more fluid and a lot deeper. You know, the 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 range of motion limitations seem a little bit higher um, earlier in my sets, but as I get later oof, into my sets, I can really bring those knees closer to my chest and really uh, engage that good range of motion. And I'm a I'm a big fan of range of motion regardless of what exercise we're doing, but mostly for legs in general because, I mean, it's hard to get a good stretch on your quads, right? There aren't many ways to, like, overextend or to extend our quads if you really think about it. So I think the leg press is a really good one if you can get good wrong. And then if you're a really deep water, pulling that hip away from the knee to really stretch that's that quad out is uh it's really cool and it it burns so good but set two done i got <coughs> shit i forgot it was 11 but i know we were in that rep range so good rest move on to set three <coughs> our boss is one of the game tv gone yep <sighs> That snuck up on me one more. Okay, we got 10. That was our last one for that. We're gonna move on to quad extensions. We got three sets of quad extensions at uh, 100, I believe. Oh, I think last week we were actually at 100 also. Um, but you know, after our three compound movements, this shit gets heavy real quick. So we want the pad pretty much hooked in between the top of our foot and our ankle. We can put it a little bit higher to get on the chin. I kind of just like it as low as possible. I feel like I slot more um, tension on the extension the lower it is on my foot, the closer it is to the top of my foot. So um, here, foot placement is whatever. You can open up a little bit. I think when you open up, it kind of targets this a little bit more. And the more together you got your quads or your knees pointing in, well, you kind of start focus on the outside a little bit. So I'm going to try to keep mine as close as possible. I kind of think about squeezing this little metal piece right here in between my quads. And then instead of curling up, I'm more of trying to push the pad in front of me or away from me. So we got 10 to 12 of this also. Uh, three sets, one RAR. Yeah. Big body bed, man, my 
Why you should be that Why you Like any any other exercise, that twelfth rep was probably was really hard. Um, as, shit, that was something I wanted to say, but I forgot. Oh yeah, when the uh, when you're working on your eccentric or the weight that's coming back, you don't necessarily want it to hit the plate stack because you're going to attempt to use that momentum to hit and then bounce yourself back up again. So you kind of want to go guide the weight down. If the stack touches, that's fine. Just let the stack touch. But you want to make the least amount of noise to apply the most amount, least amount of pressure when the weights, the stack hit each other, so that you're not bouncing and using that momentum. So, you know, you're here, fully extended for your one second, whatever it is, and then you're guiding the weight down. That's going to keep that tension on your quads. And then if it comes down and the weight stack touches, let it touch, let it rest, and then same thing all over again. I try not to let the weight touch because me keeping the weight from touching or the stack from touching keep tension on my claws and I get to a place where the extension is pretty much full my feet are or my leg at the knee is bent 90 degrees I can hold it there without the weight touching and then I can fully extend again so just think about that concentrate on that set one down I think we did talking to y'all motherfuckers I always forget how many reps I do but I think that was probably 12 so Last one, it can count. I typically do the seated uh, calf raises for this one. Um, somebody that's using the machine, you know, some are used to stand one. Kind of want to just talk about this one for a little bit. This one's a little bit uh, different in regards to being seated. Um, I think this one's a little bit more challenging to actually do, but um, same idea, same mindset. I use a complete load, the seated one with about two plates and a 35, but I think that's probably equivalent to doing about 60 to 70 pounds on this one. So. Um, the tracking for this one won't be um, as accurate, but it's just one day. So I think, like I said, the equivalent for this one will probably be like 60 to 70. With my, me breaking or displacing my metatarsal, I kind of want to be a little bit careful with this one. Uh, only because I haven't done this one yet with the tension or the pressure on my outside of my foot. So we'll see how it goes. First set, 10 to 12, 70 pounds. 70 pounds.
set one down 12 set two and three probably gonna be 12 and then set four is probably gonna be around like 10 but the goal just like any other exercise is to uh keep tension on the quad the entire time get a full range of motion as much as we can staying on the toes and then uh you know, really pushing on that concentrate. What's up, dude? Hey, shit, hey, shit. I like the truck cover, man. Oh, appreciate it, bro. I think I got this one from Target. Yeah. Set two. Set two, uh, like I said, 12 again. I'm really starting to feel it in the, uh, the calves here, which is good. I think next week we definitely gonna jump up about 15 to 20 pounds for this one. Um, but set two done. Set three, probably get 12. Based on how I'm feeling, set four, probably be 12 too. And I can probably increase this rep range, um, maintaining one RAR, but increase the rep range to 12 to 15 just to get a little bit more. Um, I purchased it to the calves. This is really the only time that I train calves. Um, so, I mean, I guess more hypertrophy for one, one, uh, one iteration, four sets a week. But two sets left, Let's take a good rest and get back into it. It's that stretch, that shit right there. Pulling that stretch for a long period of time. It's killer, but that's it. That's our leg workout. Oh. Hope y'all enjoyed that, man. It was, like I said, kind of what I was talking about in my last video, how to make your own workout plan. We did three or four compound movements and then one to two accessories. So today we did three compound movements. We did our hat squats, our belt squats, and then our um, leg press, and then our accessory movements with the quad extensions and the calf raise. So, Hope y'all enjoyed the video. It seems like you guys like these interactive videos a little bit more. I'm actually talking to you guys through and walking through my, my actual workout. Um, so I'll probably be doing these more often. Granted, it will get repetitive because, I mean, I do the same exercises and the same workouts every week. But, excuse me, being able to interact with y'all a little bit more, I guess, is you guys feel more engaged or get more engagement out of these type of videos. So more of these videos coming soon. I really appreciate all the love and support. Uh, we're getting a lot of subscribers and a lot of a lot of interactions lately so i really appreciate that um if you haven't already if you're new to it, please consider leaving likes comments and subscribing and i will catch you all in the next video